Athletes develop a spectra of repolarization changes, which include tall T waves, J point elevation, ascending S2 segments, and prominent U waves. However, some athletes also show T wave inversion that overlaps with the vast majority of conditions that are implicated in sudden cardiac death. Anterior T wave uh, inversion specifically is present in around 60% of people with arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy but may also be present in some athletes, depending on their ethnicity, the type of sport that they play, their age, and their sex. And I'd like to go through these types of athletes one by one. Black athletes make up 20% of our Olympic team and one third of our Premier League. These individuals have a high, uh, have a high prevalence of repolarization anomalies, including T-wave inversion. This data set from 1,400 uh, white athletes and over 900 black athletes and over 100 controls shows that around one in five black athletes has T-wave inversion, and the commonest T-wave inversion in black athletes is in the anterior leads, in leads V1 to V4. White athletes have a much lower prevalence of T-wave inversion in all the leads, and black controls also have a lower prevalence of anterior T-wave inversion compared to athletes. And it's our feeling that anterior T-wave inversion in black athletes is a normal variant. To demonstrate this in more detail, if we look at anterior T-wave inversion in black athletes and in white athletes, and then we compare the prevalence and distribution of T-wave inversion in black people with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, you will see that T-wave inversion is much, much more common in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, but that T-wave inversion is predominantly distributed in the lateral leads, and this supports what Antonio Plitcher was saying, that lateral T-wave inversion should be considered as abnormal, irrespective of the ethnicity of the individual, but you'll see that black athletes have a higher prevalence of anterior T-wave inversion, even more so than people with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And this is the typical T-wave anomaly that we see in male black athletes, whereby there is T-wave inversion, usually in leads V2, V3, and sometimes even V4, that is preceded by J-point elevation and convex ST segment changes. You'll also see that the T-wave has quite an asymmetric distribution with a steep downward descent. If we take this pattern as the reference value for many of the black individuals and white individuals, then I can show you a distribution of the normal patterns of anterior T-wave inversion that we see in black athletes. And you will see that the one thing that all of these T-wave inversions have in common is the preceding J-point elevation and the convex ST segment elevation. When we actually look at these anterior T-wave inversions pre and post exercise, i.e. exercise seasons, we find that they resolve very, very quickly with detraining. Here you've got a football player that shows anterior T-wave inversion during the peak football season. And just, a f just four weeks after the season was over, the T-wave inversion resolved. Now, I've been talking about black athletes as if they're just one race, but black people come from all over the world. And the current experience suggests that it's black athletes from West Africa and Middle East Africa that seem to have the highest prevalence of T-wave inversion. And I suspect that the reason why we're seeing more T-wave inversion in the UK is that most black, black athletes in the UK originate from Nigeria or Ghana rather than Kenya or Tanzania. I'd like to now shift my focus to endurance athletes. These are people who engage in long distance running and cycling. We know that endurance athletes have the most profound uh, ECG changes, and this is data from Australia on 1,200 athletes that were divided into endurance, non-endurance, and mixed sport. And the endurance athletes are in the blue bars, whereas the non-endurance athletes are in the red bars. Uh, the mixed sport in the white or gray bars, and you will see that the endurance athletes have the highest prevalence of anomalies, including T-wave inversion. T-wave inversion in these athletes was confined to V2 and V3 and was relatively minor. So anterior T-wave inversion in total was present in 14%, of which the vast majority 
had T-wave inversion in leads V1 and V2, but an important minority, that is 4%, had T-wave inversion extending to V3. Here's another data set in a much smaller cohort of 500 younger rowers, of which half were male and half were female. Here, one in five athletes had T-wave inversion in V1 and V2, suggesting that T-wave inversion up to V2 is relatively non-specific and should not be uh, uh, worried about unless there are other anomalies. And only 1% had T-wave inversion going beyond V2. Now, how do we tell the difference between anterior T-wave inversion and ARVC? Because the thing that's, things that they've got in common are T-wave inversions in V1 to V3. We had thought about this idea of J-point elevation. In our experience, athletes who show anterior T-wave inversion often have J-point elevation of more than 0.1 millivolt that is often accompanied by a convex ST segment, whereas individuals with ARVC have a relatively flat J-point or even depressed ST segments. If we use this criterion to help differentiate between athletes and non-athletes, or athletes and, and athletes with ARVC, then the sensitivity for J-point elevation of 0.1 is 98%, i.e., if you've got an, an athletic individual who's got J-point elevation and a convex ST segment with T-wave inversion just in V1 to V3, then you've probably excluded ARVC. The problem is the specificity. The specificity is only 37% in our in our experience. So if you've got an athlete who doesn't have J-point elevation, you are no further forward than you were before. And you may say, well, where did you get this data from? Well, we got this data from athletes who had disease processes, but 70% of athletes in this cohort were black. And that may explain why this J-point story seems to be quite prominent. Now, I think if you've got a black athlete who's got T-wave inversion, who does not have J-point elevation, you should be a little bit more concerned about that individual. Here are ECGs from a mother and a brother of a black athlete who died suddenly from arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Just focus on the fact that they've, all, they've both got T-wave inversions. They were both gene positive for ARVC. And you will see that the T-wave inversion is not preceded by J-point elevation. What about white athletes? In white athletes, you've got to look for other anomalies. Here is data from Gerardo's study. Looked at 82 individuals with ARVC and 129 healthy individuals with T-wave inversion in V1 to V4, including around 70 athletes. These people, these, these healthy people have been investigated comprehensively and hadn't found any phenotypic features of ARVC. You will see that people with ARVC have more than one, one anomaly. So 62% have anterior T-wave inversion, but they have other things such as inferior T-wave inversion, lateral T-wave inversion, delayed upstroke to the S-wave, epsilon waves, or even ventricular premature beats and low voltages. So when you see a white individual with T-wave inversion that's not preceded by J-point elevation, look for other anomalies. And here's an example of a 17-year-old elite cyclist. You're assessing him. Just have a quick look at this ECG. The one thing that he has in common with athlete and ARVC is T-wave inversion in V1 to V4. But this athlete has more things. He's got a delayed upstroke to the S wave in V2. He's got an epsilon wave. And he's got small QRS complexes in his limb leads. Children. Children often have anterior T-wave inversion. And the prevalence of anterior T-wave inversion in children declines steeply after the age of 16 years old. So you may allow a juvenile ECG pattern in an asymptomatic young child without a family history until they are aged over 16. And if there's T-wave inversion persisting beyond V2 in someone aged over 16, then you need to investigate. Our uh, practice here at CRI is we see someone aged under 16 with two-wave inversion, we repeat the ECG, often normalizes at the age of 16, as you see here in these two cases. What about the general white population? This big data set from Anil in over 14,000 individuals where 340-odd had anterior two-wave inversion, and none showed findings of ARVC, suggesting that anterior two-wave inversion alone is a very non-specific finding. 
we found that athletes had a higher prevalence of T-wave inversion than non-athletes, but this T-wave inversion was predominantly confined to V1 and V2, although some women had T-wave inversion going beyond V2. From this study, we concluded that T-wave inversion in V1 and V2 may be a normal variant, but T-wave inversion beyond V2, especially in males, may be suggestive of cardiac pathology. So this is how we're left. T-wave inversion is not always abnormal in athletes. It's present in around 4% of adolescent athletes, around 4% of women, around 13% of black athletes, and around 14% of endurance athletes. And if we then put this into the new criteria, ST segment elevation followed by T-wave inversion in V1 to V4 goes into the normal category in black people. T-wave inversion in V1 to V3 in people under 16 goes into the normal category. And if you look to the top right, T-wave inversion in V1 only is now T-wave inversion beyond V2 in white individuals that requires further investigation. Thank you very much.